So suppose we have the graph defined by this equation, and we want to find the arc length as x goes from 0 to 2. So we're told y is positive. So if we take the square root of this, we take the positive square root and get y is just that. And in the arc length formula, we need to find the derivative. So the derivative of this, I have 2 times 3 halves times x plus 4 to the 1 half, which is just that. Now the formula for arc length. was the integral from 0 to 2, the square root 1 plus the derivative squared, and plugging in what we have here, we get 9 times x plus 4, the square root get squared, and so we just have x plus 4. And an antiderivative, after you do, you could substitute for this. An antiderivative, well, this is to the 1 half, so I add 1 to that and divide by that to get a 2 thirds in front. And then I divide by this 9. And I'm going from 0 to 2. And this is 2 over 27. I'll have 55 to the 3 halves minus 37 to the 3 halves. And you could put this in your calculator if you want, but that's good enough. Now let's figure out the arc length of this as x goes from 0 to pi over 3. So first we figure out the derivative. The derivative of the inside is negative sine over the inside is cosine, which gives us a negative tangent. The formula for the arc length was the integral on the interval we're talking about of the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. The derivative squared is just tangent squared. And this should look like an identity to you, because this is secant squared x. Secant is positive on the interval we're talking about. So the square root of this squared is the original thing. We don't have to introduce an absolute value. And if you recall, an antiderivative of secant is natural log secant plus tangent. And we're evaluating this from 0 pi over 3. Let's see. Secant of pi over 3 is just 2. Tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 minus natural log secant of 0 is 1 and tangent of 0 is 0. So the bottom is just natural log of 1 which is 0. So the final answer is this.